Hi, I'm Yi Xin Liu from Monash University. I will give a presentation on our recent paper, Towards Unsupervised Deep Graph Structure Learning. Graph Neural Network is a popular learning model for graph structure data. Using the message passing mechanism to propagate the information along predefined graph structure, GNN learns to predict the node, edge, or graph level property in an end-to-end -end manner. Recently, GNN has been widely used to model various graph structure data, including social network, molecular graphs, and e-commerce network. However, GNN cannot be directly applied to non-structural non data. Despite the extensions of some potential structural information under non-structural data, such as traffic sensor networks and EEG signal relations, these non Graph structure data cannot be directly fit into GNN because GNN always needs an explicit graph structure as its input. The second issue is the limit, limited performance of GNN when graph structure is unreliable. The graph structure from real world system is usually imperfect, missing some significant con connections or containing noise edges. When GNN learns from such unreliable structure, it sometimes makes wrong prediction as the toy example shown. To address these limitations, graph structure learning technical that learn graph structure from data with missing or unreliable structure is proposed. Here we formulate graph structure learning into two scenarios. Structure inference is to learn graph structure from non-structural data, and structural refinement is to generate an optimal structure from the noisy one. With the structure learn learned by graph structure learning, GNN can learn more informative representations and then make better predictions on graphs. Ex existing graph structure learning methods usually follow the supervised learning paradigm, where structural optimization is supervised by the no classification task. In this paradigm, the graph structure is parameterized with certain neural network models, such as prob probabilistic model or machine learning model, and then the model is strongly optimized with GNN by minimizing the cross entropy for no classification. However, this supervised paradigm has some limitation. The first is the reliance on label information. Learning with no classification tasks need, man need manual annotated labels to provide supervision signal. And unfortunately, the label information is sometimes expensive to acquire in most real world systems. The second limitation is the bias of learned edge distribution caused by the semi-supervised setting of no classification. Under the semi-supervised setting, the connections around label, label, label nodes will receive more guidance during the structural learning, while the connection far away from the label nodes will receive less. Such bias will lead to the Im imbalanced edge distribution of the learned structure. The third problem is the limitation on downstream tasks. The supervised method usually learn a task-specific of optimal structure for no classification task. However, the learned structure may not be benefit the downstream task besides no classification. To address the aforementioned problems, we pro propose a novel unsupervised graph structure learning paradigm. Instead of learning GNN and structure jointly under the supervision of no classification tasks, we propose to optimize the graph structure as an independent task and without label-based supervision. With the structure learned by unsupervised algorithms, we can apply it to various downstream tasks, such as no classification, link prediction, and no clustering. Compared to the supervised counterpart, our proposed unsupervised paradigm has three advantages. First, it does not re rely on label information. Second, the learned structure is unbiased. Third, the learned graph is task agonistic that could be freely applied to diverse downstream tasks. Then I will introduce the proposed method. To solve the unsupervised graph structure learning pr problem, we propose a structural bootstrapping contrastive learning framework named Sublime. The basic idea of our method is using contrastive learning to provide supervision signal for unsupervised graph structure learning. The input of our model could be a signal feature matrix X for structural inference 
or feature matrix S and an unreliable adjacency matrix A for structural refinement. Our framework is composed by two modules. First, the graph structural learning module is designed to model and regularize the learned graph topology, which is represented by an optimal adjacency matrix X. Then, the structural bootstrapping contrastive learning module provides a self-optimized supervision signal for the optimization of graph structure. The first component of graph structure learning module is the graph learner, which models the sketch of the optimal structure as tiles for input data. To model op optimal structure for various data, we consider four types of graph learners. The full graph parameterization learner is the most flexible one that models the full adjacency matrix with a parameter matrix directly. Apart from SGP learner, we also introduce three metric learning based learners. In these learners, a neural network based embedding function edge first generate the embedding for each node. Then, a node par parametric metric function, such as cosine similarity function, is utilized to generate the optimal adjacency metrics from the node embeddings. The difference among three metric learning based learners is that they use different embedding networks. The attentive learner uses GAT like self attention layers to generate the node embedding. The MLP learner uses multiple MLP layers to generate the node embedding, which is more flexible than the attentive one. The GNN learner further considers the original structural information when it is available, where GCN layers are employed to compute the node embedding. Then, a post-professor post refines the sketch adjacency matrix into a sparse, non-negative, symmetric, and normalized optimal adjacency matrix S. The first step is sparsification, which is executed by selecting the connection with top k values for each node. Then, Asymmetrization op operation is used to generate a symmetric adjacency matrix, and then a ReLU function is used to make sure each element in the adjacency matrix is non negative. Finally, the normalization processing is to guarantee the edge weights are within the range 0 to 1. After acquiring the learned structural S, I'm going to introduce the Structural Bootstrapping Contrastive Learning Module that provides supervision signal for structural learning. In this model, we first establish two different views for contrastive learning. The, learn view GL, the learner view GL is constructed from the learned structure and the original feature. This view can be updated via a gradient descent during training process. The anchor view GA is to provide guidance for structural learning, which is initialized by input data. It should be noted that this view is not updated by gradient, but another bootstrapping strategy, which we will introduce later. From a teacher-student perspective, the learner view can be viewed as a student to discover a different possible optimal structure while well, the anchor will serve as a teacher that guides the student's learning. After view establishment, we use two augmentation strategies to perturb the graph views. Specifically, the feature masking strategy is to randomly mask some feature dimensions of the feature matrix, and the edge dropping is to randomly discard some edge from the graph structure. Then, a contrastive learning component is used to maximize the mutual information between two views. A GNN-based encoder first generates a node representation for each node in both views. Then, an MLP-based projector is employed to map the node representation into a new representation space for contrasting. Finally, a node-level in for NCE contrastive loss is used to maximize the node-level uh, node agreement between two views. To, relate, to relieve the uh, negative impact by noise edge, provide persistent guidance, and present overfitting, we further introduce a structural bootstrapping mechanism 
to update the anchor view with the learned structural information. Concretely, we update the anchor structure every C iterations by a slow moving average of the original anchor structure and the learned graph structure. Here we use the hyperparameter tau to as the bootstrapping decay rate to control the update strength. To validate the effectiveness of the proposed sublim method, we conduct ex experiments on three downstream tasks and scenarios, which are no classification as structural inference, no classification as structural refinement, and no clustering as structural refinement. We evaluate, we evaluate our method on eight benchmark datasets, including uh, four graph structural datasets, Cora, Sysia, PubMed, and OGBN Archive, and four non-graph structural datasets from SKLearn. We consider various types of baselines for the comp comparison in different settings. This three table display the performance comparison between our proposed method and baselines. We can witness that Sublim achieved the best of the render up performance on almost all data sets of all settings. It should be highlighted that our unsupervised method out outperformed the supervised method on some data sets in no classification tests, which show the effectiveness of our method. To verify the robustness of Sublim, we conduct no classification experiments on graph under random ad adversarial attack. Compared with the supervised graph structure learning method ProGNN, our method has competitive or superior performance in both settings, especially in the edit deletion setting. We also visualize the original structure and the learned structure by ProGNN and our method for comparison. We find that our method can learn some connections between intra-class nodes, while the inter-class connections are rarely learned. Compared to the supervised baseline ProGNN, our method can learn ba balanced connection between labeled and unlabeled nodes, which show that our method successfully avoid the edge distribution bias. We also perform ablation study to demonstrate the effort of structural, structural bootstrapping mechanism, which show that an appropriate selection of tau can be lead to the best performance, which is uh, 0, 0 0.9999 for the three no classification data set. Finally, we perform some parameter studies to conduct uh, to show the sensitivity of our method to different hyperparameters, uh, including feature massing probability, the uh, edge dropping probability, and the number of the neighbors for specifications. Finally, we conclude this paper. In this paper, we propose an, a novel unsupervised paradigm for graph structure learning. And to solve the unsupervised structure learning problem, we propose a novel learning framework, Sublim, based on structural bootstrapping contrastive learning. We also conduct extensive experiments to show the effectiveness and analyze the property of Sublim. Thanks for your listening to the presentation. Thank you very much for the presentation. So uh, are there any questions for Yixin? Yeah, I have two questions. So uh, is the speaker here? Yeah. Yeah, so my question is, uh, I, I see you in your framework that you have a learner view. And after that, you, you, you conduct contrastive learning between the learner view and the anchor view. But I noticed that uh, after you generate those learner view, you, you still- uh, Yes, add, just yeah, please. You, yeah, you still add uh, random augment, uh, augment, augmentations uh, over both the learner view and anchor view. But in my view, like the learner view itself is already an augmented view. So do we really need those uh, random augment, augmentations after we obtain the learner view? Or is there any application study over there? Hello? Uh, Ixin, are you there? Hi. Yeah. 
Yeah, the uh, that's a very good question. So I think that the data augmentation here is to uh, is to make the contrastive learning task more difficult, and it is one component of the. Yes, yeah, sure. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, I, I can hear you. Yeah, I hear the question, but can you hear me? Yes. Sorry. Sorry, can you hear me now? Hi. Yes, okay. Sure. So I'm going to ask, uh, answering the, yeah, and now I'm going to answering the question. So in my understanding, the the data augmentation is a component of the contrastive learning model. So here it is, it can bring the, uh, it can give the more difficult, bring more difficulty to the contrastive learning task and to make the contrastive loss more effective Effectively to to train the model and yet yeah, I think so so that's why I would like to add the data augmentation on both both the learner view and anchor view and in our experiment it showed that the data augmentation uh, really helped to uh, learn a better uh, adjacent symmetry as well as the uh, contrastive learning model. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I have another pro uh, problem is that uh, I remember you have yeah, a that's, specific... that's the answer of the question. Yeah. Is yeah, there any Thank further you. questions? Yeah, I have another question that I, I remember you have a specification component. And before the specification component, the uh, learned graph should be dense, right? So how could you handle the OGB archive data set? That should be a really large data set, right? 